You know what it is. You are in PE with Dave and Jay. I am Jay. That's my Dave. boy Dave. What's good? Uh, what's good? What's, what's good? Hey, man, nothing, man. Another Sunday, another, you know, build day. Uh, looking forward yeah, to it, man. Um, today looked like uh, we're going to be dealing with abs, you know, like what we used to call them when we were younger, abdominiums, right? You know, so uh, just a couple of exercises that I, uh, I pulled from the from the archives of uh, Tony Horton. Um, <clears throat> a lot of these exercises for you folks at home, uh, these exercises can be done at the crib um, with a mat and uh, possibly a medicine ball or, uh, you know, 10 pound plate or dumbbell even or kettle ball. All right, so uh, yeah, it's geared for you folks at home uh, that don't have, uh, you know, all the fancy equipment at the gym. So uh, just, uh, yeah, bear with us, man, and uh, let's build, let's build on these apps. All right, bet. So, so what we got? So, what we got first? So the first, the first exercise that we're gonna um, push out this morning, uh, gonna be in and out. All right. So I'll show you guys the setup real quick. Like I told you guys, all you're gonna need is a mat for this. All right. In and out, simple. All right. And there's different ways you could do this. I like to, you know, do the more advanced uh, method, but I'll show you guys the intermediate. All right. So you're gonna be in kind of like a C position with your body. Um, you can brace your uh, stuff with your hands. And all you're really doing is you're lifting your legs off the ground and you're bringing your knees in and back out. And then hence the name in and out, right? So what I like to do is when I come in, I bring, you know, I come with a little force so that I can have that bounce across, uh, against my upper torso. And that's where I can feel like contraction. That's where, the, that's where the money's made right there, boom. So we're gonna do 25 of those and uh, yep. And then we're gonna alternate. Um, what we got after that? Um, and then we're going to, we're going to be sitting right here, same spot. And we're going to do bicycles and same movement. Like you can brace yourself. Oh, I didn't show you guys the advanced move. The advanced move when you're doing those is you would, you know, uh, put your arms up above here on your shoulders or your, your hands on your shoulders, kind of keep them up away from your knees and execute the exercise as such. All right. The next okay. exercise is going to be the bicycles, right? You could either brace or you could, um, you know, hold your arms up and you're going to be, you know, cycling a bicycle right? While you're in the seed position, all right? And you're going to do 15 reps forward, and then you're going to do 15 reps in reverse. And the reverse is where it gets you, all right? Because there's no break in between. You're just going to constantly go slow through. Okay. And so it's one, uh, the third one. The third one is going to be uh, pretty much the same as in and out, but we're going to incorporate our arms, all right? Okay. So we got our arms out, which kind of makes it more advanced. And we're going to bring it in and we're going to wrap our arms around our knees when we bring it in. Got it. And you're going to feel that degree of difficulty raises a little bit. You're going to feel that big time because you're not supporting yourself on the ground with your hands anymore. All right. How many right. of those are we doing? Just the we're doing 20, 25 of each, of each exercise. Um, okay. It's a good rule of thumb for you guys out there. Got it. All right. All right. Cool. 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 Sounds good, man. Sounds good. All right. All right. So I got a question. I got a question because you can take the All first right. set. All right. So All right. Cool, 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 cool. I have three daughters. I have three daughters, right? And my daughter comes to me and she says, uh, my youngest, she comes to me with a towel wrapped around her head. And she's like strutting like she's just super cute. And she says, look at my long hair, daddy. And I was like, that ain't no hair. That's a towel. She's like, no, this is my long, beautiful hair. You see? And, um... I, you know, I, I, I remember I remember kids doing that when I was a kid. And I associated to um, them wanting their hair to be long and flowy, like, you know, what they see princesses, you know, in uh, the Disney movies and shit, right? So, so I, I, found it, I found it as an opportunity to, you know, talk to my daughter about her hair and how beautiful it is and how her hair, you know, though it may be different um, from, you know, from you know other people or people she sees on TV, um, her hair is unique in that it grows towards the sun instead of going towards the ground. And just because it doesn't hang down and it's not flowy doesn't mean that it's not pretty, right? And you know it got me to thinking about like like uh, fairy tales and you know symbolism and stories that we tell our children and what they see on TV. And it brought me to the color black, 
right? To the color black, oh. right? Because there's a, I see a, 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 a very heavy push now by, you know, Disney and, you know, all of these uh, cartoon companies and movie companies to push um, this agenda that, you know, brown skin is beautiful too. You know, they, I see them trying to be more inclusive of different uh, ethnicities uh, in the cartoons, right? right? right. And it got me to thinking about like blackness and colorism and, you know, light versus dark, you know? Um, The whole Willie Lynch, you know, this syndrome thing, you know, like darker skin is ugly and black is evil. You know, and it, I just kind of went down a little rabbit hole of this whole like colorism thing, you know. Um, I'm curious about what your thoughts are on colorism, you know. All right, uh, what, what do yeah, you think so, about that? So, uh, just like you, uh, my, my youngest daughter was afflicted by that European standard as well, um, of beauty, um, to the point where she didn't like herself. And you know, it's weird, right? And like in, in our culture. See, I used to have curly hair. You probably don't, you probably <laughs> can't notice that from here, from this point. But, uh, you know, my daughters have curly hair, um, very willy curly hair. And uh, they don't really appreciate it. It's weird. It's something that I appreciated growing up because, uh, you know, I guess I, obviously I look different um, than everybody else around me, whatever. You know, I kind of had that mixed look being an Afro-Latino, right? Um, and that was just something that I embraced. But my kids don't because uh, I'm not necessarily growing. They're not necessarily, I'm not raising them in the same environment I did. So. Of course, their standard of beauty is a little different. Um, and of course, they're adapting to their surroundings. So I had the same talk to, you know, basically teach my child to love themselves. And uh, that's a terrible, you know, because it's obviously something that's making them feel bad about how they look. I mean, again, it's what you're born with is natural. I mean, right? Like, so what's so bad about it? I think with my kid, it was more manageability and being able to, uh, you know, uh, do our own hair and whatever have you, because we all know that, you know, of course the hair is a little bit difficult to maintain and change up style sometimes. If you're not properly, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? If you're not necessarily trained, right? My wife does a great job of trying to, but it all comes down to like laziness, I think at times, but as far as color is concerned, uh, yeah, again, that was like, the, that was my real first test. Like my two older children really kind of, uh, you know, understood what, what they had and, it, you know, uh, and appreciated what they were born with. And so we were, you know, so it was my real first test and it, it kind of hit me hard um, and uh, really struggled to really handle it and know what to do and really, you know, to, you know, the teacher that she was great. And, and you know, this, like you said, it's growing towards the sun, right? Like it's, uh, that's special, that's different. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, that's pretty hard. I'm still dealing with that brother. Um, I'm still dealing with uh, trying to uh, teach her herself, you know, self-worth and, and uh, that, we're, that we matter and that we're beautiful as well. You know what I mean? So, um, so little, just like that. I said, just bring, bring you in a little taste of, 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 of the household and, and how that's affecting us now, today's society, right? Right, right. I mean, I, I, I appreciate the push that there is, you know, like we have Moana's and we have Princess Tiana and we have like, um, what's the one oh, with Bruno, no, 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 you know, the Hispanic. And, we have, you know, Asian representation. You know, I think it's, we need to be intentional with um, our approach to, um, to race, you know, in order to make things better. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, fairy tales, you know, the, of the old, you know, they were hella racist, man. Like, um, you know, um, I was reading where Disney Plus, you know, they have like, like shows like Dumbo, um, Damn, what's up? Uh, um, 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 Peter Pan, like they, the older ones, the older movies, um, they even have like a disclaimer on it saying that there are racist elements to this. Uh, yeah, wow. like this, yeah. So, like, um, you know, with Dumbo, there's a whole like minstrel show in the original movie, you know. Wow. Um, uh, maybe yeah, go back I and think, look at that. Yeah, I think it might be the crows. Oh, uh, I've noticed. Oh, one wow. Song, yeah, one song where he's like, I'll be <laughs> that's always been there, about man. Every- yeah, I beat on scene about everything when I see an elephant fly. You know what I'm saying? Or um, Peter Pan, you know, the um, stereotypical um, Indian, you know, stereotypical right. Indian in there. You know, so right. um, they've even made it where it's not available for kids that are, um, un- unless they're like seven or older or something like that. But 
Wow. It's, yeah, man. So, you know, because I feel, you know, the reason why I bring this up, man, because I don't want to, I don't want to teach my children to be, it's what like white folks would call reverse racism, right? I don't want to, and I don't believe that black people in America can be racist. We can be prejudiced, but um, yeah. I don't want to teach my children to be prejudiced against the white people, right? Um, I don't think that's the answer. Uh, I do want to teach them self-love, you know? Um, so, you know, when we go to the store and, you know, we're buying Barbie dolls and things like that, you know, I do kind of urge them towards, you know, dolls that look like them, but ultimately I let them decide, you know? And I don't want to be a parent that tells them they can't have a white Barbie doll, you know? Yeah. Or I don't want to yeah. be a parent that doesn't buy a white Barbie doll, you know? Like I bought my children white Barbie dolls and I thought I would never do that, you know? But I mean, what do you, when you were raising your kids, did you let them have white, white dolls? Um, I, uh, so it wasn't a conscious effort. I'll be honest with you. Hey, oh, you know what? Well, before I answer that, let me, let's go to the next circuit real quick. I'll show you guys the, right. the next set of workouts here. Um, cross leg, wide leg, sit up. All right. So you either doing a cross leg like this, you can see me, right? Yeah. Um, cross leg or I'm sorry, wide leg or cross leg. Cross leg is a little harder because you don't have the ballast of the weight of your legs trying to anchor you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I like to do it like this. So you're pretty much, man, uh, 15 on each side. We're going to just, we're going to just do a sit up, right? So this arm here, my right arm is going to come up and cross over and touch the ground here on the left hand side. Then I'm going to alternate okay. left arm up, cross over, touch. Now, if you got your wide legs out, right, I'm crossing over, I'm touching my toe, right? I have a target. Okay. Boom. All right. And this is all abs, you know? Try not to use those arms to push off the ground, and you got a good workout, all right? Uh, okay. The next one is going to be scissors, right? So I'm going to have this one, this leg here suspended off the ground as well, right? This leg all the way up in the air. And what you're trying to fight for is to put your, have your heels shooting towards the heavens, all right? All right. All right. The same thing what, with your heel on the ground, okay? Or oh, the heel that's closer to the ground. And you're just going to alternate. You're going to hold for about three, four, five seconds. And then you're gonna switch it up. And your arm is right here on the side, or you can place them here, all right? And then your, my favorite, the hip rock and raise, this is a tough workout. So you're gonna, you're gonna sit with your, your uh, heel or your feet, uh, the bottoms of your feet facing each other, all right? And pretty much you're just gonna rock your hips and your, and your, and your toes and point them towards the, the sky, okay? Boom, just like that. And using your abdominals to thrust your lower torso skyward, straight up. Got it. All right. All right, All right. so 25 of those. All right. All right. All right. All right, so you got it? You straight? Yep. So, um, yeah, you know, honestly, man, um, I wasn't as, uh, I wasn't as, uh, I guess you want to call woke as I am now when I was growing up when we first, uh, you know, we first started uh, our, our this, this family, man. So. It wasn't really a conscious effort for us to really to do that. I mean, if people bought dolls or whatever, we didn't like exclude them like, oh, no, you can't play with that one. You know, what I mean, we just let it be right. We let children just be because especially me being in the military, um, I was already in a blended uh, uh, system. You understand? So, um, you know, diversity was there. It wasn't as much as, you know, I would say New York or whatever have you. But, yeah, uh, the, you know, diversity was still prevalent. So I didn't make a conscious effort to do so. My wife at times would, you know put a little emphasis on, on those things that, you know, again, like you're saying to, to show them that we, these dolls do exist at least, you know, and there's beauty in them, right? Cause I remember seeing this uh, gripping, um, I think, my, you know, the start of my journey of, of, of becoming awake, <laughs> um, I, I remember seeing a uh, documentary and they were showing, they had, you know, a, a panel of black children and white children and they showed them the dolls. They had a black doll and a white doll. And it was like, well, which doll do you think is the prettiest or which doll do you think is, you know, is, I would say evil, but which, which, which one is the bad doll? And nine times out of 10, they would, you know, the bad doll would be the black doll. And then, um, you know, the pretty doll would be the white doll. And this is, these are fresh minds, right? These are babies, right? <laughs> so um, it was just mind boggling to see that, you know, the, the color black was associated with, you know, uh, uh, negativity, man, and at a, at a young age. So once, once we, you know, like I said, once we were, uh, we got kind of hit to that agenda and, you know, we started to put, uh, put more emphasis on that kind of thing, but they, you know, by that time, you know, my kids weren't really playing with dolls anymore. 
Um, and uh, so that wasn't a battle for us anymore. But yeah, I mean, if I was to have another child, I would ensure that, um, you know, I would buy them dolls that kind of look like themselves. <sighs> and still, it's still some self-worth to kind of avoid those pitfalls. Because um, that's a terrible thing to see a child that hates themselves or, ha you know, or, or hates uh, the, the skin that they're in, man. It's a terrible feeling, man, to be honest with you. And so, you know. Facts. Yeah, so that, yeah. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. That um, that uh, <clears throat> that study that you're talking about, it's, uh, it was in 1940. It was um, Dr. Kenneth and Mamie Clark, a married couple. Um, and what they were setting out to do was to prove that segregation, um, discrimination, and prejudice um, have a severe effect on um, on self esteem, um, and they oh. were trying to prove that black kids had lower self esteem because of segregation. That study actually was used in the Brown versus Board of Education um, case in order to show that um, conditions of separate but equal were not actually constitutional. So that's a huge uh, study that you that you just mentioned, man. Um, you know, the kids they they had negative connotations. They would ask. Um, ask the children, you know, who is the good doll? Um, who is who? Who does? Who makes good grades? Who listens to their mom and stuff like that? Like, so they would attribute character trait, personality traits, to the color of the doll. All the dolls looked exactly the same, except for um, yep. the tone of their skin. Um, yep. Uh, is one thing that uh, Dr. Kenneth Clark said. Um, he said he was actually the first. Um, him and his wife were the first two black people to get PhDs from Columbia. Uh, I didn't know that. Um, really smart couple. But he said the one thing that broke his heart during the study was a little black boy. Can't remember where he was from. I think he was from somewhere in the deep south. Um, they asked him, they pointed to the, um, the black doll and said, what is that? He said, "That's." Um, he, said, he said, which which of these dolls resembles you or which of these dolls looks most like you? He said, the nigger doll. I'm a nigger. Mm, yeah. mm, he said, mm, the nigger mm, dog. I'm a nigger, mm, you know. Terrible. So, um, yeah, so, you know, so it, it lends into this conversation about Black, right? Because we, I think, us more than any other ethnicity, especially in this country, of course, we struggle with what to call ourselves, what we would be known as, uh, how wow. we identify, you know, wow. and we went from being um, slaves to being, like, niggers and colored and then we wanted to be black then now we're african-american and some of us are saying we're still black you know i think so what do you think about that should we be called should we call ourselves black i mean it's given the negative connotation of the word black um that we i mean before we even get there right let's make sure that um i work out buddies on the same page right so um the, when, when you think of black right like just, let's just think of this in terms of a very very basic understanding of, of life and human nature. Like, where do you feel most comfortable, right? As a human being, where do you feel most comfortable? In a well-lit room or in a completely dark room? I think most people will say that they feel most comfortable and most secure when the lights are on and they can see what's going on. So to say black gives a connotation of darkness. Darkness gives a, a feeling of fear, um, of anxiety, of uh, being scared, of hopelessness, of depression, of tragedy. Um, then you can use it to mean evil or mean wicked. Um, we can go further and talk about like word use, right? Like um, language. You talk about black oh. male. You talk about um, you talk about black ball. Black hole. Black, black hole. Yeah. Hole. Black male. Yeah. 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 Black yeah. male. Yeah. Black listing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so the term we can't argue. You can try to argue, but you'll lose that the. The, the, the word black has a negative connotation overall. And then it's opposite. They, you, you talk about white, you know, talk about white, white as snow, snow white, um, purity, doves are white, um, you know, light, white and light, white is right, you know? So do you think that we should call ourselves black? Um, given the connotation? Hold on, before I answer that, let me get to the next ones, right? Um, All right. So we did the... The hip rock and raise. The next one is going to be just a pulse up. All right. And you're going to have your heels pointed to the to the sky again. That's important yeah. right? to really get.
get this ab workouts uh, to kick. The heels need to be pointed up. I said it before, I'm saying it again. And uh, pre pretty much, man, all you're doing is you're using your abs and you're bringing your hips off the ground and your heels towards the heavens. Boom. Uh, and you want to be able to maintain this sway, okay? You want to stay in a certain range with your feet. You don't want to be all over here and all over back here. You want to just kind of keep them in, you know, maybe a foot, uh, I guess a foot uh, span. Boom, like that. Uh -huh. that's, that, and that's what and that's what brings the pain, all right? That's what that's what okay. that's where that's where the money's made. All right. And then uh after that, we're gonna do a V-up roll up. And that workout looks like this. Let me uh adjust my mat here. I guess you can see me better from the side. All right. Um <clears throat> so you're gonna be doing a sit-up. I'm gonna have my hands like this, straight up in the air. Okay, then I'm gonna come up, touch my toes, and as I come back down. My legs come up, right? And guess what? Okay. The magic happens right here. Boom. I come back up. All right? So okay. let me show you again. So that's the, there's that. There's the V up. And that's the roll up. All right? So man, let me do this again because I'm fatigued a little. And I want to show you guys the right way to do this here. Up. And then back down. All right? Okay. Got it. All right. And then the next one will be the oblique, oblique V up. All right. So you're going to be on your side. Can you see me? Can you see me good? Yeah. Am I cut yeah. off? Am I cut off? Okay. So this arm here, man, you know, again, I want to emphasize this. Do not push off on this arm. You're going to, you're just going to negate the, the workout by pushing off, right? You want to be isolating your obliques to bring your body forward. All right. So this arm is just for balance. All right. So you're going to, Place your, uh, your left hand behind your head. And all you're doing is you're bringing up your lower torso, torso to meet your upper torso, all right? Okay. Like that. And you want to stay, you want to be, you want to be V'd up to a certain degree, all right? Your feet are going to be pointed out in front of you, okay? And you're going to have like a slight V to your body here, right? And yeah. you're just bringing it up. Just bringing it up. And try to make contact if you can, right? Boom. All right, you see, I'm not pushing off on this arm. It's just there for balance. All right, right. and then you're gonna turn over and you're gonna do the other side. Got all it. right. Um, so, all right. I mean, you know, that's an age old um, debate there, man, or age old question. Like, what should we call if we're not called that? Um, and you know, just like that, the N word conversation that we had, you know, I guess we're trying to, uh, uh, you know, reappropriate it and make it sound better. I mean, uh, we really had, we really didn't have uh, a plethora of, of positive terms to really be called, right? Like, I mean, it's really, what can you say? I mean, seeing that we're a mixed bag of ethnic groups from, uh, you know, a plethora of, of countries uh, in Africa, I mean, what can we be called? I mean, what are they called? And see, that's another thing. That's a great question, man, because I would, you know, I kind of want to stop the video and, and, and do some research a little bit on that question. That's how good that question is, because it's like, what are they called in Nigeria? Right? Call what black. are they? They call now they Nigerians. Yeah, they're right? Nigerians, they, but they they're Nigerian. It's great. It's great that you brought that up, right? Uh, I'll, I'll stop my exercise right quick. Um, Nigeria has, I think they're sixty six percent. That's the rate. The the percentage. Mm -hmm. They basically put it like this. I'm not. Gonna, I don't want to spout out incorrect facts. Um, right. But Nigerians in the entire continent of Africa, Nigerians are the highest percentage of uh, people who bleach their skin. Oh. Yeah. Wow. There's, wow. Yeah, there's, as a whole, yo, they are not trying to be, they are not trying to be dark skin. They are trying wow. to lighten their skin. Yeah, man. Wow, it's, wow, it's sad. Wow. And, you know, a lot of people do it on the black market and use creams and stuff they ingest. And it causes panthers yep. and ulcers and all this type of shit, man. But yeah, they're black. You know, they say black. They say black. Mm. Yeah, great question. So do you feel like that, you know, basically like kind of seeps into our psyche though, you know, just being called black? I mean, that's another question. That's another good question to really kind of uh, expound, uh -huh. expand upon as well. But um, yeah, again, that's a great question because I don't, I don't know what we would be called. I mean, I guess Brown spoken for, because um, um, really that actually matches, you know, that would actually, you know, uh, perfectly describe skin tone, right? Um, right. But uh yeah, I, I, you know, that's like, man, I'm, I'm at a loss of words for, for the first time, man, because I really don't know what would be a reasonable 
I think you know, just like the N-word is something that we just adapted to. And uh, we made, you know, uh, it, 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 I guess we made good. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, um, we don't necessarily have to fall into the, the negative stigma of the word or, or how, how, how it sounds. I mean, black is, the, you know, I guess the color of our, I mean, that's, I don't know, man. <laughs> Again, I'm at a loss of words. This is what I'll say, man. This is what I'll say. Um, for, so for one, you know, with our workout buddies who are listening, like the one that first I would say this, Keep in mind that because one, we don't necessarily know what to call ourselves and the only names that we can think of to call ourselves are what other people called us. Please understand that's why we have to take ownership. Well, that's why we feel that we must take ownership of certain words, right? So when in our last episode, when I'm talking about um, us be only being able to say nigger or saying nigger, like that's what that has to do with. The other thing about it is, Please keep in mind when we're saying black, when we're being pro-black, when we're saying we, I'm, I'm rooting for everything black, when we're saying we want our da- daughters to pick black dolls, when we're demanding that Disney and Pixar um, have more representation of people of color, when we're doing this, we're not being anti-white and we're not being no. prejudiced or racist. What we're doing is what needs to be done. And this is, to, and I say that to answer your question, Dave, like what do, what do we do with the word black? How do, what do we call ourselves? We have to, re- in my opinion, we have to refashion the way that we see Black, right? We have to deliberately, right. deliberately teach ourselves and then teach our children to teach their children that Black doesn't mean bad, right? We mm-hmm. have to deliberately teach them that their hair is beautiful. We have to deliberately, and, and that's why we have this push of like um, Black Lives Matter. Or that's why we have this push of like, we want to see more Black representation because otherwise, Otherwise, it's just going to be the same stereotypical bullshit that we're fed. That the only way you can be pretty is if you have lighter skin, if you have a, a, a thinner nose, if you have um, longer hair, you know? So that's what that whole, for, for those of y'all who are listening, that's what that whole dynamic is. It's not us trying to be racist or reverse racist or prejudice. It's us trying to change the story of what it means to be Black. Um, because we're fed it sub- subconsciously. And me? we got a lot of work to do, man. It's an uphill battle. I agree with you 100%. We got a lot of work to do. And uh, it's a rebuilding process. And, uh, I, I, you know, but see, I, um, the only thing is, I'm just not, I'm not sure that that is where, I mean, I guess it should be part of the agenda. But I'm not sure if that, it, you know, that's something that I'd have to research to find whether or not it does permeate into our, our subconscious as far as those ne- that negative term, right? Um, Because you don't know until you know, right? You don't, you know, so as far as the child is concerned, I think that, um, you know, as far as them picking the doll, they necessarily come from the word black. It's just how we were treated, you know, and how, and again, when we talked about the appropriated adaptations, I think that's just something that was just passed down. And it's just, you know, um, that's how we're teaching our children to look at themselves and think, you know? Um, I think so too. Yeah, I think so too. It comes from, it also, it's it's small things, right? It's small things. Like you, you, um, I don't know, something simple as like, as my wife and I, this is personal, but my wife and I, my point here is this, that children learn, they learn things very subtly. They learn things in a subtle uh-huh. way. So I I, my wife and I, my wife and I have to be careful about how we talk about my baby. I have a baby mama. We have to be careful how we talk about my baby mama in front of the kids because they pick up on certain little things that we can say. And I don't want them to think that we dislike her, right? So mm, I don't mm. want them to learn. You understand what I'm saying? So it's the same yeah. thing when you talk about race or when you talk about religion when you talk about anything else. When your children are, are present, you have to be careful with how they feel about what you're saying, what the overall feeling is. Because when yeah, you talk about yeah. black, they don't, yeah, they don't get it. They, all they know right. is black is scary. You know? well, I'll give you, um, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you a word that really like culminates what you're, what you're trying to, uh, uh, what you're trying to say. The word nappy, right? Like that's nappy, a real word. Yeah. That's a real yeah. word. Um, and, and you'll see like, you know, carpet installers or whoever or whatever, or even people that talk that, that kind of repair shoes, they talk about nap. And that's just, you know, I guess the, the, the coarseness of the fibers or whatever have you and the way it's uh, the way it flows. And uh, so when we look at our hair and we call it nappy, but yet we give it a negative connotation. Like, man, call me a nappy ass hair. You know what I mean? Just right. little, thi- little things right. like that. So I exactly know. I, exa- I know exactly that's what exactly you're saying. Right. It's, the, it's the way it's portrayed. It's the way it's said. But that's a good point. There's a, a good, um, very good. there's a professor um, that I used to uh, I used to study when I was in seminary, right? It was a uh, professor. Um, 
His last name is Cone. I think his first name is James. Damn, I hope I didn't mess that up. Well, I'll just call him Dr. Cone. Um, Dr. Cone has a book called God of the Oppressed. God of the Oppressed. Fucking amazing book, right? His whole notion is two things. One, he's saying that God is black, right? One, he says that God is black. And everybody's all up in arms about that shit, of course. But I don't even want to focus on that. What I want to focus on is the oppressed part. What he does with this book is he changes the idea of what it means to be, not what the idea. He changes the perspective of what it means to be oppressed, right? To be oppressed means you're downtrodden. It means that you, you can't get up, right? Like people, some, something is pressing you down. And what he says in this book is that God is a God of the oppressed. If he says, he, he quotes all of the scripture showing that God is for the underdog, right? And so he's associating God with the underdog. God roots for the underdog, underdog. God uh, reaches down and brings the underdog up, you know, um, and he's saying that black people historically are the underdog. So in that sense, he's saying that God is black. So the same thing that, that Dr. Cohn did with the word oppressed is the same thing that we, that I feel like we need to do with the, with the word black. We need to refashion our perspective of it. You feel me? Okay. But, okay. Well, with that being said, let me ask you a heavier question, right? We always, oh. talk about, we always talk about the wool of, you know, his hair was like wool. His skin was like bronze, talking about Yeshua, Jesus, right? All and right. we know that that, the, that whole story, all of that took place like in um, the Middle East. Like they, say, they call it Africa's headdress, right? So these were brown-skinned people, right? All right? I don't know if any, some people don't feel comfortable calling them black, but, you know, I'll call them black, right? Um, they were Middle Eastern people. Um, with that being said, the Bible is one of the worst Forgive me, anybody, all my Christians, forgive me. But the Bible is one of the worst representations of black. You, if you go and look in that book, it ain't, ain't really many things that say black is good in the Bible. Mm. So for mm. black folks, for black folks to be as Christian as they are and as religious as they are, and then be reading a book that says there's a curse of ham, or, you know, to be saying uh -huh. that, you know, black is evil. God is light. If God is light and Hasatan and Satan is the opposite of God, that means that he is black, right? right. Like, what right. do we do with that, with the, the Bible's connotation of blackness, bro? I mean, and, and we all know too, man, they gave us different books <laughs> to read uh -huh. when we could read, right? They gave us a whole rendition, you know, a, a, a whole remixed Bible, right? To basically justify our positions, right? Um, right? And you know, it always boggles my mind, the fact that we're still on that, though, bro. Like, we're still kind of, you know, praying to that, um, I guess, that white Jesus as well, man. You know what I mean? So it, that's, a, that's a rough one for me. I've never really quite understood it, uh, I, I, you know, um, even in my younger days, even, even in, in the BDA days, man, I never quite understood, you know, why everyone around me, you know, there's no one that, that deity that we worship doesn't look like anybody that I live with. <laughs> Oh, or, 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 yeah. or break bread with, right? So I'm just like, oh, I mean, they're feeding us the, the garbage from the jump. And, it, you know, that was something that was very hard to even pass to your children, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's a hard thing to explain. You know, I'm not, and you know, honestly, I've never had that question. I can't say that. I mean, I would love to, I would love to see comments on this one, but like, what do you tell your child? You know, how do you, how, right. do, you for, how do you feed that to them and show them this image? You know, like, I used to watch Good Times all the day. I know that's like one of those, uh, the black exploitation, uh, uh, you know, TV shows, but I remember there was a cool episode uh, where Michael brought that, uh, well, no, JJ painted the wino, yeah. um, but he looked like Jesus, and, you know, Jesus. Michael was making a, yeah. you know, he was making a fit, you know, I mean, he was, you I know, he go was, back and watch that. Yeah, he was pitching yeah, his case for the black Jesus, but, you know, the mama, what was her name again? Florida. Uh, Florida, yeah. Florida was adamant about that white Jesus, man. I mean, like, it was yeah. crazy, and it was weird to see, like, and she really, you know, she really, she killed that part, because she really embodied that desperation, that, that you know, uh, of keeping hold of that, that, um, you know, the, the image of the white Jesus, man. Right. And it goes to, and that was just a testament of the stranglehold that it has on us today, you know, even so. But all right, so I'll return the question on you, um, because that, that's a tough one. But do you still, do you think colorism is prevalent in today's society still? Like with us? Um, do, are we still afflicted by that? Are we still doing absolutely. that? Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, Absolutely. Um, we even in our walk I mean, times, even at, at our walk yeah, is point. Yeah, 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 man. You know why? Um, 
because and and again like for one out there was a whole article about this um this i think she's nigerian um celebrity uh i promise y'all i'm uh, i'm gonna like, drop the link i probably should have already right um a whole i'm talking about this lady go, went in right but what one thing she said was her bleaching her skin is the same as getting breast implants and ass injections right it's the same thing it's a preference Ooh. it's what people people are preferring to look lighter Right. Yeah. Um, it's Pandora's so, box, man. Yeah, it's Pandora's right. box. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Michael Jackson did it. We still loved him, but he did a lot of other shit too. <laughs> he I did think, a lot. Allegedly, allegedly. Um, but you know, but yeah, man. Um, I think that colorism is definitely still prevalent. <clears throat> um, when you have people like uh, Little Wayne and um, uh, Fifty Cent, you know, um, and Two Chains or whoever, they're talking about foreign. You know, um, everything I got oh. is foreign. My bad bitch is foreign. My car's wow. right. It's like they, it, it's we're not, you know, people who are woke, you know, people who are paying attention. We know what you mean by foreign. Like we're not dumb. Wow. We know that wow. you're saying that you prefer someone with curly long hair or straight hair, a thinner nose, as opposed to someone who looks like your sister. All right. So yeah, yeah color our hero, problem, our, our, our hero, our hero in uh, uh, you know, Serena. Right. That's a, you know. You know, what I mean, that's a big one, right? That that rocked us, right? Yeah. That just and, and it's not even about who you marry and your preference as far as your mate. No, it's what you were doing to with you your, with, to 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 you. To, yeah. to to to, to, uh, to maybe assimilate. I'm not sure. I can't really speak on that. You know, okay. Uh, now we're on social media. Now we gotta be careful, right? <laughs> but no, but still, so but still, in that sense, it's uh, it's kind of weird to see, man. It's weird to, to still see that. You know, we're in the we're in the information age and, and you know, uh, information is flowing about our culture and about our history and the things that, you know, we shouldn't be doing. And we, it, it seems like it's hitting harder. It seems like, right. you know, we have more. And you know what else? Another, another cool fact, man, which, what, what, um, what I see is that, I don't know about you, but I see more. Um, so I was reading this article last night and it was talking about like what we should do to combat colorism, right? And yeah. uh, it talks about and this is, this is, this is so contradictory, but it talks about like a man that looks like myself yeah. uh, should be more of an advocate for colorism because I'm already in, hey, oh, 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 hold on. When you do that exercise, I need you all the way down. I need you, your top side, I need you all the way down. Like your bottom side. Yeah. 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 So yeah, folks at home, you know, we're watching. We're watching. <laughs> Making sure you don't, you don't cheat on us. Yeah, there you go, man. There you go. But anyway, what I was saying is that, you know, basically the article was stating that guys like myself should use my, uh, what you would call privilege or my fairness to be an advocate for people that are darker than myself, man. Craziest thing ever, but you see it, right? Like, like, all right, for one, Kaepernick, right? Cap Kaepernick's a light-skinned guy, right? And uh, what's the other uh, brother that, that that's an actor? Uh, Jesse something, whatever. Yeah. yeah. That, uh, oh. yeah. Oh, so you see that. that you, yeah, je oh, man. But yeah, you see these guys are they going they going in? Like, you know what they were called? The, the, what, what do we call them? mulattoes and 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 octomaroons and all this other stuff? Octoroons, octoroons, yeah, yeah. octoroons, whatever. The, I don't know. What the, but anyway, <laughs> I don't pay attention too much to it. Um, but it just seems like guys like myself have to go hard because we're not accepted by nobody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. I think that's part of it too. Oh, you know, y'all are accepted by everybody. What do you mean? No, no. What I mean is this: it, 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 yeah, it, it may seem that way, but it's but it's not true, right? So, like you, you even said it yourself. Like growing up, you know, everybody thought I was white, right? right. And I remember, I remember my my friends that I grew up with in Brooklyn told me I ain't never had a white friend before. I guess you're cool. I guess you're cool. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and I was like, what? Oh, I mean, we live in New York City. You, you, there's examples of whites all over the place, and I definitely don't embody that. So I had to work harder to really be accepted by. Blacks, and then when Black I get people. into a white society, I mean, yeah, I might be more accepting to them than the um, dark skinned men. Then, yeah, but I'm still not them. You understand? So them. I'm in a rock in a hard place, right? Yeah, so I, and we, I, and you know, and that's a perspective that that's a perspective that we don't consider. It. And like for, like for, matter of fact, I cut you off. Go ahead and finish, bro. No, 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 no. I, 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 yeah. I think you got it. I think, I think that's we a, all got that's it. A so got that's it. a perspective that we. That's a perspective that we don't consider, or I would say, like brown to darker skin um, blacks don't consider when it comes to um, lighter skin um, blacks, right? And I would say it's, it's like, um, <clears throat> it's like us listening to the plight of a white man. Not that mm. you're a white man. 
it's it's like it goes. It goes <laughs> poor like, me, right? <laughs> yeah, because because you were because you were you you from your yeah, from your from your perspective you you had you struggled to be accepted or seen as one of us. From our perspective, all the girlies liked you. You know what I'm saying? You was right, on the bars, right. my nigga. You know what I'm saying? So like, so we like, we got light skin and curly hair. That's what we wanted to be, you know? So it, it's not even that you weren't accepted, it's that we just, we're hated, you know? And when I say oh, we, I'm talking collectively. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Yeah. Think about it like this. It, it, just take wow. it deep. Just, just, just it, dig that's into what the, it is. Dig in, just dig into the, the wound, right? Um, All right. Did, a, did, 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 the, did the big, did the big black African looking dude who was um like, out there being fuck broken and he he had to you know uh kick 500 uh the pounds of cotton and all this shit like he was being beat if he didn't get 500 pounds did that guy did he really really did he really think he was better or did he really not want to be the um light-skinned black who was inside serving tea it's kind of like your racism, like your racism, it's kind of like your racism, uh, uh, you know, argument. It's like, I can't be racism because I don't have the power, right? You know, so I don't mean? have the I power, but, uh, but he really prejudiced. wanted to be, you know what I'm saying? They really yeah, wanted to be yeah. you. He wanted yeah, to be yeah. inside. He wanted to be, um, the, he wanted the master to be his, 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 uh, dad, you know, yeah, he wanted, yeah. he, yeah, he wanted to be light skin and curly hair. That's huge. You know, that's so that's huge. why, but it's a perspective we need to consider because we're all in the same barrel. We're all crabs, right? So yeah. we need to listen to the perspective of lighter skinned blacks, just like lighter skinned blacks have to listen to the perspective of darker skinned blacks. Um, yeah, one thing though, I want to mention, team, yeah, we're same on the same team. team. One thing I want to mention before I forget it though is um, I do see a push, all right? I do see energy being pushed towards like um, black. Well, it's always been there, right? For a long time it's been there, black is beautiful. But I'm saying like, I'll see on social media, like um, a gorgeous, uh, black, uh, gorgeous sister or gorgeous brother, and they're like deep chocolate, dark black, like black as the color of my true love's hair, like yeah, super, you know, super like you know the color of yeah. the cosmos, black, right? And yeah, yeah. And we're like, oh man, that's beautiful, right? They're beautiful, but when you one thing I have, the one problem I have about it is we're saying it's beautiful because the skin is so dark and so oiled up and shiny. Like we're, wow. we're, it's like, it's, we're like saying, oh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. It's like, we're trying to program ourselves to be like dark is beautiful. So we have to, wow. we have to find these images, right? We have to find these images to prove to ourselves that we like dark skin, you know? Wow. And I get the best it. of Do the you, best. The, you understand no, what I'm saying? I, yeah. I, I, it's like the bless yeah. your heart thing. It's like the bless your heart yeah. conversation. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you know, yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we, it's, it's not like it's just inherently beautiful. It's, it's, it's yeah. a push. And it's, it's like, yo, it's yeah, point. so, but I think it's just because of the beginning, you know, our origin and the fact that right. we're not around that as much to where like, right. that's all we are, right? Um, right? Because we're in the most diverse country in the world, you you know, you have all these different standards of beauty yes. and European style being the dominant force, 70% white in this country. Yes, you're going to be able, you know, you, you get in where you fit in, right? But you, if you live in Ghana, if you live in Nigeria, if you live in these places, Ethiopia, Kenya, Right. That's right. just it. That's what that's life it. is. That's you're born right. in that situation. So that is beauty. That is right. what it is. It's so we, you know, again, I don't disagree with the tactic, but it is sad. You know it's what I'm sad. saying? And you know what I mean? I, I, so, so I understand it wholeheartedly. But, you know, again, I think, you know, I, I applaud it because we're at least we're giving it, you know, where we're racing those uh, negative connotations, right? We're, we're, we're right. racing the stereotype, we're racing, you know, that viewpoint. And uh, it, it starts slow, right? It's not something that's yeah. gonna happen overnight. And like, I'm so, I'm not as quick to criticize it. It's just, yeah, it is sad though. It's, a, it's, it's sad. A you you, you make it feel funny. You get your feeling yes. funny feeling. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, yes. Hey, so you that, know what? That, uh, you know, We've really- in, oh, in, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna right. let, let you, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna let you get that in. But let's, uh, let's, let's, let's talk about these leg climbs real quick. All right. All right um, and then the Mason twist. All right. So leg climb. All right. So you could either keep your leg all the way down like this. You can see me good. Yeah. You can see me. Or you bring it up here. This makes it harder. Okay. Like I told you guys, you don't have the balance of your leg when you all do right. it like this. So what you're doing is you're doing a leg climb. You're doing a sit up, but you're, you're going to try to touch your toe. All right. So you can do it in many ways. You could do a, you can climb the leg. Okay. Or you could do like a one grab and then a and then a, a climb, you know, or, or a touch. Or you can go straight up, boom. Or like okay. I said, you can have that leg straight up, and then and go and get it. 
Yep. All so right. you're gonna do 15, 15 on each side. So okay. I, like I said, I like to do it where my knees bend for a greater degree of difficulty and go straight up. All right. All right. And then the next workout is going to be a twist, a oblique twist. All right. And All right. I got 25 here. Uh, it's a little ambitious. Um, I see guys do it with 45, man. Those guys are beasts. But uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna touch the floor and each turn. So it's important here that you're you're not like just you know, I can sit here and do this all day, right? This is, this is right. crazy. But you're actually twisting the torso, right? Getting that mind-muscle connection. Twisting the torso. So pretty much this is rigid, right? So, you, you know, the only real motion that you're doing is kind of touching the floor when you're moving your arms, okay? But pretty much I'm twisting my torso, not my arms. So I, what, you, see the, you see the difference between okay. this? And moving your, and this? your lower body. Exactly. Your lower body is so moving also. That's, that's a, that's very important. Oh, oh, oh as, far, um, as far as the so, lower body, yeah. Uh, so you want to you want to fight to keep this rigid though, and yeah. that's part of the battle. That's part of the battle as well. But those legs and, are lifted uh, though. Those legs are lifted. Yes. They're not. Yeah. Yes, very important. And that's why I say it's so hard to keep it straightforward when you're twisting your torso. But you want to fight for it, and you'll get better over time. All right. And now for the so go ahead. For, of course, of course, for the beginners, you know, um, some of the you know some of the people that I train um, are beginners. So they, I tell them to keep their legs down on the ground because it's very difficult yeah. for them to keep them raised. Um, but you still want to twist that torso. Still get that yep. torso twisted. And you know no. whether you're working or not. Look, y'all know whether you're working or not. All right? You're not for here sure. to play around, right? So, yeah. Right. Indeed. Um, but indeed, yeah, indeed. the only other thing I was going to say was this, man, uh, when it comes to that. Well, I have a lot to say about it, but, you know, we don't have much time. <laughs> so um, one thing, I want to just issue a challenge, man, because I'm really, really delighted to see that we have um, – a lot we have diversity in our um in our workout buddies you know we don't just have black folks or black men or whatever um you know following us and listening and and, and commenting man y'all been commenting that's super dope you know tell us what you think yes um, it is dope you know that's dope man you know because uh, that's what we're all here here to build while we build man it's we're, it's not about color it's about building right but i want to issue this man um i'm gonna make it about color uh, i want to issue this challenge you know um to any of our um, workout buddies who aren't black, right? Um, and have children, you know, or grandchildren, you know, buy them a black doll, you know. If you have, if you have, uh, if you have like a grand granddaughter or, or daughter, wow. I challenge you to buy them a black doll, or, or just even ask yourself, do they have any black dolls? You don't even have to buy them. Or, if, or, if, if or you're Jay, not ready for Jay, that, just think to yourself, do they have any? Let me top that off. Let me top it off. Let me top it off. Just even before you even do that, ask yourself, well, why don't they have them? And, and, and is it a conscious effort to do so, right? Like, is it something that, is it something that, you know, like I said, you, you, do you overlook it when you're in the store? Like, yeah, that doesn't look like my daughter. That doesn't embody her. Or, you know what I mean? Like, what is it? Like, and I, I actually, you know what, man, please, like you folks that are, you know, like you said, that are non-black and are interested in our conversations, man. Um, yeah, ask yourself that. Would you, would you just, do, do you, do you pay attention to that? When you do buy those dolls, is that something that, right. um, because I haven't been to the toy section in a while, but I'm pretty right. sure there's a very diverse uh, selection it's of very, uh, um, very diverse. You know, yeah, um, it's very I'm, diverse. I'm, so I'm just wondering is this something that, is it a conscious thought or what? You know, I'm very interested. Yeah, that's a great point, bro. I, think I, about I, it, I, also, think about it like this we, you know, black people are very conscious of this when we go to the doll section, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yo, yeah. Black people, yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all something. Workout buddy, black people are conscious of this when we go to the card section. When we're wow. buying cards, think about wow. how many holidays there are in a year in this country where you have to buy a card. That many times right. a year, we are deliberately trying to find black cards, right? Wow. We even have mahogany. Hallmark has a mahogany section, right? So this is something that we live with pretty much on a day to day basis. Um, we have bought white dolls or had people gift white dolls to our children. You know, it's something that we've done. So I challenge you to do the same, you know, consider, just consider, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so let's be in this together, you know, but the you know, other, we other thing, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. No, no, no. You got it. No, I was going to just throw a fun fact in. Um, yeah. we were talking a little bit about, it's a little off track and that's why I didn't want to deter uh, but like a little fun fact, man, um, there was something called the one drop effect that took, uh, oh, that, that was instituted in, in, in the 16th century that talked Ooh. about, you know, race, right? Like we really yeah. didn't even scratch the surface on this topic, right? We, did, we talk bro. about how, how race was, was, 
I think we're going to, I'm going to save that tidbit for another time, but you know, as far as the origin of race, but when they started to kind of dissect that and, and create that division, you know, you were considered black if you had some form, some lineage, maybe one ancestor, right? Because you know, yeah. when, with the whole, uh, with the whole experiment in, in, in Germany with the Jews, you know, they basically had a system to basically tell whether or not you were considered Jewish or not, right? I think it was like oh, wow. three grandparents or, or something to that effect. I, you know, like, you know, I, I, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this at another date to really uh, to spit some facts, but yeah. it only took one ancestor, it only took one uh, descendant for you to be considered black. So let's, let's keep that in mind too, guys. And when we're starting to like look at each other differently, Honestly, we were you were considered if you had just a drop one, of black yeah. blood, you right. were considered black. So like, again, let's remember that when we're trying to unify, guys. I mean, right. uh, again, who who's who's creating this division? Okay, right. We shouldn't be perpetuating the 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 same uh, tactics of the oppressor. Right. We should be loving each other. We should be taking care of each other. Um, especially sometimes, man, black is not really it's not really here. It's a state of mind. Real talk. So, so speaking of I that, know, right? Very good point. Very good point, right? Um, so okay, um, we'll keep with the colorism, man, because we move. Yo, I can't remember what the second. No, 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 no. No, that's right on. That's right on. I can't remember what the second um second exercise was. Oh, um, it was the twist. Not the like, oh yeah, the oblique twist. That's right. Um yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. so because uh, really, really we were, you know, it was on our on our syllabus or our agenda today to move on to something else. It would be about that time. It's probably past that time. But let's stay here, man. Um, yeah, because let's do it. Let's do it. There's something else that we haven't, there's something else um, that I read that we haven't talked about yet, right? There's this, damn, I think his last name, his name is Adam Alter, um, a professor, A-L-T-E-R. If I'm wrong, of course, I'll correct myself in, in below um, or down below. But um, dude did, a, um, did some research and... There was in the, I think it was the 90s, right? Where um, OJ Simpson was the 90s, yeah. We were in high school. When when OJ Simpson um, was arrested and they would put his picture um, in the newspaper, there was a whole thing where they darkened his skin. Whoa! Yeah. And what this dude, man, was Adam, I think his name's Adam Alter. Yo, it was so bad. It was so bad what they did to OJ Simpson. I'm not trying to say he was innocent or guilty. You know what I mean? Um, but... It was so bad with it. This is before trial. It was so bad that, it, you know, they were trying to sway people's uh, opinions of him. It was so mm. bad that the newspaper had to issue an apology. People noticed how much they darkened his skin and how bad uh. they made him look. So this dude, Alter, he, um, or Adler, um, the, the professor, he did research specifically on celebrities who are, um, who are like indicted or something like celebrities who get in trouble and what okay. they do to their pictures when they put them in the newspaper. He said, um, not only do they darken their skin, but they, um, they, they like make it not a really good looking picture. It's like fuzzy, you know, they, <laughs> not flattering, they fuck, not flattering, they're not right. flattering at all, but they also yeah, darken yeah. the skin, man. And it's wow, just man. like, um, it, it, also he did a, uh, he, with this research, he, um, he showed people pictures and asked them like, um, who's the criminal, so to speak, like, who's the criminal? Um, mm. He tells the people, like, um, you know, what, he asks them, what is the color of their soul? He showed wow. them pictures of these criminals and asked and told them what they did and said, what's the color of their soul? And people colored their soul, right? And of course, their soul being black was the worst offensive, right? I say sure, all right. of that to say, I say all of that to say two things. One, there's a lot of research being done around colorism, race, and things like that. But two, I want to ask the more difficult question. Um, take it way out, way far out. Is God black? Mm. Is God white? Mm. Mm. Um, right? I like, think. I, well, if you want to ask that question, I can give you an yeah. answer. I don't. I don't answer. think it's God. I don't think God embodies um, uh, a color. To be honest with you, I don't think there is no uh, color with, with the with the infinite being. Um, I think what it is is that um, right now we're living. You know, they say God created us in His image. But I don't. I think we take image too too literally, right? I, I, you know, because like I think we're energy, we're souls, just kind of you know having the human experience, right? Just like Jesus did. Jesus was, uh, you know, a, a, a great soul that was experiencing, that was experiencing human, human life, right? He was experiencing yeah. the human, the human. Uh, I guess the human project, right? Yeah. Right, right. Uh, I didn't want to say experience twice, right? Experience again. Yeah, so, yeah, I feel you. <laughs> yeah. 
So, um, but so I think you know, I don't think he has. I I don't I don't I don't know if there is a uh, I don't think there's a color associated with that great being. I think that's a that's a falsehood. That's a, that's that's white supremacy in its own right to actually associate or any any type of supremacy, black supremacy, whatever supremacy you want to really like uh, uh, that you want to embody, right? I think uh -huh. that's more so one of those things that we use to kind of create. Um, dominance within our within our, uh, our ethnic group within or culture, ethnic group. yeah, yeah, or, or race, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So I right. just don't think, me personally, I don't think that you know, like the Bible. I'm not a big Bible guy, so like I know the Bible gives a description of Jesus, right? But I'm not sure if Jesus was, you know, I guess the Messiah, the true Savior, or whatever have you. I'm not sure of it. You know what I'm saying? So like him being having a description, I think Jesus was kind of like. All the other great individuals in life, right? Like that that, that come before us, Mahatma Gandhi, Plato, all these different uh, 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 historical figures that kind of taught us to think or to, to 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 explore our subconscious as well. You know, so I'm not sure if that's a good representation of who God is as well. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So I don't think that there's I don't think that God actually uh, possesses a race or a color. Um, that would be asinine to even think of, um, seeing that we're all come from different shades and uh you know different forms so that would be a crazy do you thought. think it matters do you think it matters it, it, it shouldn't it shouldn't because again that 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 again that perpetuates that that whole stigma of of supremacy right if, if our great being that everyone worships or as some in some form of fashion be it yahweh uh uh you know uh jesus god whatever you want to call it if he possesses a skin tone and a color then whoever looks like him is superior right right <laughs> so right. I mean, you and and, and and can we have that? I mean, we can't have that. We can't have that. I'm sorry, that just doesn't make any sense. If we're going to be unified and we all human beings, there's no way that the first, you know, the, the great creator is actually, you know, is, is one sided. You know, and then that makes sense to me, bro. Just, yeah, makes sense to me. So I, I definitely don't agree with that. That can't happen. Yeah. And, for us, and again, uh, uh, you go ahead. You go ahead. No, again, and, and and like yeah, for us to. To to I, I and even for us to hold on to that, I think Jesus is black. I think blah blah blah. I mean, we're not even Jesus, but God is black. Ah, uh, right. We fall into the trap. We fall into the same mindset and thought process because if we're on top, are we pushing that to our white slaves? <laughs> you know, like what are we doing? Yeah, are know. we better now? Yeah, yeah. I get what yeah. you're saying there. Now, I, I, so the part it, when it comes to Yeshua being black, uh. I mean, do we? That means that we have to consider Middle Eastern as black. And we're trying to say historically, we're trying to create, we're trying to tell the true history, right? Because we've been lied to in this book for so long. If all of those accounts are true, you know, we can look at a map and say, this is where Bethlehem, this is where Nazareth is, this is where, uh, you know, Gilgotha is, this is where all this happened, and this is what those people that live there now look like. Right. This is what they, their ancestors look like. We could say this is what Jesus or Yeshua looked like. Right. But is that black? I mean, it's brown uh, skin, but is right. it black? Well, you I would say it is. I, 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 I'm going to say it like this. I'm going to say it is because when you look at uh, what those those what those men and women are, are going through um, in that region. Right. Because you look at it like this. You got Israel. Israel is, you know, uh, a Jewish state surrounded by brown countries you understand what i'm saying so if yes, you sir. want to look at it in, 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 in from that standpoint i would say that they are because those men are dealing with the same stigma that we dealt with for hundreds of years you know and you got to think about it like this when 9 11 occurred right what did they call those dudes niggas. what did they call, them? Niggas. They called them? Niggas. come on now so again man we talked about not necessarily, you know, a skin tone or a shade or even attributes, but we talked about a state of mind. Hey, they're oppressed. down. They're down. They're, they're down. That's the God of the oppressed. They're, they're down. I, I, I would say that now they might not believe it because of, you know, religion or whatever have you, but they're down. Because again, right. Palestine and Israel have been fighting for the longest time. And think about, right. think about that dynamic, guys, like viewers. Think about that dynamic, okay? And think about what, you know, the United States is... Israel's greatest ally, and they'll do anything in their power, you know what I mean, to be able to make sure that they they stay they stay free, they stay you know independent over there, and, and you know, right. and that they're growing that they're growing, um, you know, uh, 
you know, so anyway, so you look at guys in Iran, you look at, you know, uh, Amina Jad and all these other guys, who do, who do they look like? What do they look like? You know, who do they, who they look? Who, who they closer? Who, who they, yeah, who's the closer? Closer resemblance, yeah. Closer resemblance, right? Closer resemblance. Right. Come on, guys. Like, all right. right. So, 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 I, I take them. I take them. I, I, I sit it down with us. Um, <laughs> right. said, I'll take them. <laughs> I take them. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's that's, only yo, that's really a good so point. That's a good yeah. point. Like, you unpack, you, you unpack uh, Dr. Cohn's theology without ever reading the book or going to seminary. Like, that's a good uh, point. You say if you look at the, if you look at you're speaking of black as being. Um, not being skin color, you know, you're looking at it as being like a social, um, uh, construct. uh, uh yeah, construct. Yeah, yeah. your blackness yeah. is a social construct. Um, yeah, yeah. absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Are we, are we finished right now? Uh, I mean, we can, we, we don't have to be. I got plenty. You know well, we, me, we I got, kinda, we kind of finished it, huh? Are we, I mean, I, mean, we, we I, think, I think, I think, I oh, think we, uh, we're an hour and 12 minutes. Oh, shit. Damn, oh, we oh was talking. We yeah, were we, talking. You know, what the hell just happened? I don't know. Yeah, we went know, down the black hole. Like that. That is, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> and today's PE is? What? There it is. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Um, hey, man. So I would say, hey, love yourselves. You know, work out. You know, love each other. Help each other work out. You know what I mean? And let's kill the colorism, man. Let's kill, let's the kill it. Yeah, it doesn't mean a thing. And that's not something that uh -huh. we created for ourselves. All right. I mean, for folks that might not know, the viewers that are from, you know, other cultures and ethnic groups, all right, colorism began because of the separation of our, I guess, our, our, our bloodline, right? So what ended up happening is Master decided to dip into the, into the slave quarters and, and then dip into some, some brown sugar, right? And created some, you know, some different looking children. Okay. And then when those different looking children were growing up, they would treat, they had preferential treatment because they were essentially the sons and daughters of the mass. There was a big back and forth between the field slaves and the house slaves. Mm -hmm. And and also created division because more, normally a house slave would be an overseer for the outside slave to keep them in check. We still, we, that's still prevalent in today's society, and we, we gotta get rid of it. We know y'all like y'all like and comment and subscribe, man. Um, yo, because the conversations are good, but they're better when y'all comment. We've been in PE where we build while we build. I don't want nothing. I don't want nothing to send us.